Okay, right. Welcome to the second um, lecture. And we, in the first lecture, looked at the starting rate. Well, after the starting rate, what the government have also decided to do, and this is new um, in F from FA Finance, Finance Act 2016, what the government also decided to do was to then award another thousand um, at zero percent. So if you've enjoyed some starting rate, then the next 1,000 can also be enjoyed at 100 at 0%. If you haven't enjoyed any um, starting rate because the person just had quite a bit of non-savings income greater than the 5,000, so that that wasn't available, um, you could. The f it'll be the first thousand pounds of your savings. Then, therefore, that will enjoy this um, nil rate ban at 0%. So this is the thousand is for the basic rate taxpayer. And the higher rate um, person will only enjoy five five hundred. <clears throat> now, again, to determine whether someone is a basic rate or in what band they are in, you're looking at their taxable income. And remember, the taxable income really is the total. And when I say total, remember total is made up of non-savings and savings, well, and dividends as well if you had any. So you would have your um, incomes, and then you take away your personal allowance. And then whatever you have here, A, B, and C, is what makes up your taxable income. So when you add all these three together, I mean, we're in the total band, total column, aren't we now? So if you're in this total column, then you now can determine what band the person is in. So after the starting rate and the savings nil rate band, we then move on to discuss the actual rates at which tax has been paid. And we've sort of discussed this already, haven't we? Um, now remember that these are top slices. So when you have, you must deal with non-savings first. When you're dealt, dealt with non-savings, then you can go ahead and then you can then tax um, <clears throat> savings. So let's, um, again, like I said, once you've, um, that has to be dealt with first. You always have to deal with the, <coughs> your non-savings first. I'm just highlighting what I said before. And then you can start dealing with your savings. So this is an example, um, and this will help illustrate a lot of what we're saying here. And so what we have here is Jason. He's got bank interest of six thousand five hundred, but he. I'm on page um, of your textbook. I'm on page seventy-five. So page seventy-five. So we have Jason, and he has these. He has income tax liabilities. We're going to go through all three of them very quickly, and I'm going to use my worksheet. So we're going to work out what income tax liability he has um, due. So let's discard that and let's go to, um, let's use a worksheet to do this. Okay. All right, excuse me. What happened there? Let's just do that again. <clears throat> Right, brilliant. So I'm using this worksheet to, to sort of go through this. So the first thing I have is, um, if you remember, the, the question was that Jason had um, bank interest of 6,500 and um, employment income of 38,000. So let's just kind of feed, put the figures in. As I say, I'm on page 76 of your textbook, and you can just walk with me to see what I'm doing here. So first of all, I will have, I'll write the 36,000, I'll write, well, I'll write employment income. Yeah, so I'll have the 38,000. And then I'll have his bank interest here of 6,500. The table is so, sort of, um, I know it sounds obvious, but it really helpful to make sure everything just nicely works <clears throat> so you're not um, struggling or missing anything else. You have 44,000. 500, and you have 38,000, and then you have 6,500. Then, of course, like I said, we take away the personal allowance. We take away personal allowance of 11,000. Right? Now, this personal allowance always comes off the non savings income first. We've discussed this before. I mean, we're taking off 11,000 off everything anyway, but we always deal with that first. And what we now have is non savings income of 27,000. 6,500 and taxable income of 33,500. Now, in this scenario, 
this person straight away moves by looking at this by observing this we see that this is greater than the 32,000 so this person is in the higher rate band so they will only enjoy first of all they'll have no starting rate available for the savings because you can see this just totally covers that whole 5,000 area and then the nil rate band available to this individual Jason right now is only 500 pounds so only 500 of this of this savings can enjoy um, a 0% rate band everything else must be taxed so um, the first step is to and then let's carry on if you look in the textbook well what we have to do now is let's tax this because this is now being taxed at the normal <clears throat> sort of we agreed what the normal non savings income is taxed at so let's write income tax so we have non savings right and so I'm just going to have you 27,000 we'll tax this at 20% and then we will have we're, I mean we're done with that now now I can do my savings of 500 at 0% right and that's the important thing and then um, within this um, now I can I can carry on so I tax 500 of this at 0% then we said that savings within the 32,000 band is taxed at 20%. So I now need to sort of find what the difference is. How much do I have left within the 32,000 band of this to tax at 20%? And I have 4,500. So 4,500 is also taxed at 20%. This is savings income. So now I've got 5,000 of savings tax so far. And now I'm over the 32,000 um, band. And so the rest is taxed at the higher rate, if you like. So that's 5,000 and that's 1,000, 5,000. So that's 1,500 left. 1,500 is therefore now taxed at 14%. So this is, this is how you would deal with this, with this question. Um, and, and you can see here, by looking at this, I was able to determine whether or not I was a higher rate or basic rate um, band earner. Right, let's do the next question. And so all you have to do is calculate these, right? And, and you can see the answers on page 76, but I just wanted to walk through it for you so you can see. So let's do the same thing again for Jason when he earns 50,000. So very similar to what I've done, but <clears throat> I'm just going to walk through it so that you see it. It's about practice, I guess, and that sounds pretty obvious. So now Jason is earning 50,000. And he's got savings of 6,500. So what we have here is 50,000, and we have 6,000, and we have a total of 56,000. Okay. So 50,000 and 6,500. So I have his employment income, and this is bank interest. Again, what do we do? Apply personal allowances, less personal allowance, always apply it first to your non-savings income. And of course, we will deduct it off the total as well. And so we have non-saving income of 39,000, savings of 6,500, and taxable income of 45,500. Looking at this again, we can see that this clearly puts us in the higher rate band. So we know that he will only have 500 pounds available of savings income at the zero percent rate. We also know there is no starting rate available because this 45,500 totally maps out that amount. So let's start taxing this non-savings income. So the non-savings income, income tax, non-savings income. So 32,000 of that will get taxed at 20%, of course, and then another seven will get taxed at 40% because that's what happens to income tax. Now the savings, and so we're running out of space, the first 500 will always enjoy because he's arrived a higher rate of earner, 0%, and then the rest of his savings, which is 6,000, um, if you like, savings income, higher rate of 6,000, will be taxed at 14% and you do all the calculations um, through. 
So um, I'll leave you to do the last example where uh, he's on, where Jason is earning 145,000. But um, that, if you like, will end the video on savings, um, savings income. So I'll, in the next video, I'll discuss dividend, um, dividend income. Okay, great stuff. Thank you.